violence is actually spiraling between two communities in the state and the use of drones and missiles in the recent attacks have actually made the agencies deeply concerned. The recovery of sophisticated ammunition from Manipur has actually led to serious questions about the availability of weapons from Myanmar, working of the state police and security forces. Our security affairs editor Manoj Kumar Gupta getting us these inputs that the Manipur police sources have told CNN News 18 that armed storehouse in the bases of the insurgents in Manipur is deeply concerning. Insurgents are getting access to high-flying drones and missile systems is another concern for the cops and security agencies. They are actually using AK-47, INSAS and carbine rifles which is another major concern. Armed fighters are having access to as many as 6,000 arms that have made police and security really worried. The Manipur government source is also telling CNN News 18 that there's pressure on the state to push central forces deep inside Manipur. Senior CRPF officials, including the DG, was in Manipur for five days to ensure this move. Two Assam Rifles battalions have actually been taken out and the CRPF has moved deeper inside Manipur. G. Shri Kumar Menon will be joining us, a former director, uh, National Academy of Customs and Narcotics, uh, Dr. Malem. Dr. Ankita Datta and Arun Anand also stay on with us. Now, Dr. Malam, if I can ask you this, this forces, the Manipur police is seen as largely Mete, Assam rifles are seen as largely having a lot of the cookie presence within them in their rank and file. Have the forces started taking sides? And the CRPF coming in there in Manipur, how is it going to help? Do they understand the lay of the land, the dynamics? You're what is going to resolve this? One, you're talking about two, three things. You're Gee. talking about Manipur police taking sides. And I will obviously say that no. Hmm. Uh, the Manipur government in 2022, I think, has already declared that it cannot be a partner to suspension of operation. Hmm. And it has the responsibility to take care for the security concerns, law and order of the, uh, of the land, and also for the protections of the property and these things of the people. Hmm. And as far as I could see, Manipur police has not taken a very strong offensive actions against the uh, cookie militants, uh, hmm. cookie uh, terror outfits, except retaliatory actions. Hmm. So I, I, I think, you know, this the, the attempt to protect Manipur police as a partition force is highly, uh, you know, a misrepresentation, I should be saying. Hmm. And uh, as far as the central forces is concerned, I, I think the government of India has got its own uh, geo-strategic agenda and it knows what its, its central security forces are doing and what they should be doing and what should, they should not be doing. What are the lapses and what are the weak points? I think they are big calculating working on this. They have taken over, uh, you know, the command of the unified command, the chair, hmm. chair, chairmanship of the unified command through a, a directly nominated persons and, and a security advisor has been promptly you know like uh, installed there so hmm. i think they are working on it uh, maybe uh, uh, they, they're still calculating yes people are not satisfied and the, the victims of the terror attacks are not happy but i think government hmm. is still taking a very proactive actions and and we have to see to what extent peace and tranquility would be immediately hmm. restored but to say again that to, to project Manipur police as a, as a partisan force is highly uh, um, misrepresentation. Hmm. I'm just saying that's the narrative. I'm not, I'm not saying that yeah, is true. No, no, I'm just no, saying no, so to yes. project the Assam rifles also as partisan is unfair on the Assam rifles. But that's, mm -hmm. the, that's, the, that's the perception and that's the, this that's being mm -hmm. built. And that, mm -hmm. uh, that certain groups, that there is a reason why the Assam rifles has also been moved out. The CRPF has moved in. But do these people understand the lay of the land? Or mm. perhaps the bigger solution is that you go down and totally destroy the entire poppy base. You don't touch the population, but the poppy base, absolutely. You try and border mm -hmm. and uh, mark those borders with Myanmar, which is supposed to be a free and open border. Mark that mm -hmm. out. How are we going to resolve this, G. Shri Kumar Menon? Good evening, Anand. Thanks evening, for the sir. invite. Uh, my reading is that the present situation in Manipur is a combination or a cocktail of drugs and religion. When we speak of drugs, we have to go beyond Myanmar, I mean beyond Manipur. Uh, Myanmar holds the key. Hmm. Because the cookies by themselves are not major producers of any kind of drugs. Hmm. But across the border, you will find uh, Myanmar has hmm. the largest production of opium today. They are manufacturing methamphetamine and mm. a global leader in crystal methamphetamine. And all these drugs are 
flowing through India also, hmm. apart from the you know going to Thailand and other places. But what is worrying now is uh, these cookies have been entrapped in this drug business, hmm. and uh, we should learn from the experience of South America that once you enrich a few drug traffickers, it is very difficult to dislodge them. Hmm. And that is exactly what has happened in Manipur. If you will recall, hmm. the day Mr. Biran Singh, Chief Minister, I mean, hats off to him. He had the courage to do it, which I don't think many of the chief ministers in India don't have. Hmm. He started a war on drugs, hmm. but a war on drugs without proper preparation. Hmm. If you ask me why proper preparation, uh, just think, Anand. Hmm. Uh, we have a NCB office. In Imphal, hmm. which is manned by a very junior functionary, hmm. it's just a sub-zonal office. Hmm. In spite of facing such a major crisis, I mean, we have we don't have even a proper office. You forget about hmm. the people and other things. So this is the way we are handling it. And my reading is also that uh, the present move, what they have done of withdrawing the Assam rifles, hmm. uh, appears to be misconceived hmm. for the simple reason. Assam rifles, we can't blame them because the other day I saw some official has come on record saying that the CRPF is better equipped than Assam rifles. Hmm. So what prevented the government from uh, um, proper training and equipping the Assam rifles? Hmm. And 2022, they have been empowered under the NDPS Act. Hmm. It's only in 22 they were empowered. Now, when you say empower, how do you train the folks? Hmm. Nothing has been done by simply saying that we are empowering the force. How do you uh, prevent all these things from happening? And um, Myanmar itself is having around three major terror groups. And uh, the most dangerous is the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army. I think okay. my co pan from uh, the northeast sector would uh, uh, support me in this. Uh, now, this is the root cause and then they are trying to carve out a separate nation. Hmm. No, there are involving involving India, right? Uh, Bangladesh as well as uh, Myanmar. Myanmar, the so Kukichin are, region, and this is something that Sheikh Hasina has also hinted at, saying that there is yeah, an yeah. active active uh, you know uh, effort to try and create something like an East Timor kind of a situation in this Correct, region. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, like I said, uh, put it very very simply or loosely, there are two hegemonistic forces. There is the Chinese, and then there is the Western hegemony. And both are trying to create access and create a base there and uh, assert their own dominance there. But at the cost of Bharat, its people, its sovereignty, that's a huge, huge concern. We've got one more aspect before I open this up and uh, we dedicate some more time.